what what's interesting is anyone who has experienced a lot of trauma their brain is just constantly in a state of like hyper vigilant and we've worked with universities john hopkins texas state university you know others who have really dived deeper into this to really understand when somebody goes underwater on scuba diving what does that do? It, 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 there's some some obvious things like it calms them because it requires them to focus on something that is productive. Underwater, it demands you to monitor your equipment, to communicate with your dive buddies, to exercise. All these things keep your brain engaged in a very constructive way. And by enhancing your coping skills and the peer support and just that deeper connection to oneself and the natural world is, is just creates a very positive experience. Welcome to the Mentality Podcast. We're recording at the incredible Wheatwood Hall Hotel Podcast Studio. This is a podcast that goes way beyond stigma. We talk about men's mental health and mindset. We encourage the type of conversation that will open you up to another way to live life, another way to see yourself and the world around you. If you are ready for that, you're in the right place. I'm Stevie Ward and I'm an ex professional rugby league player and captain and now I guess I'm a bit of a podcaster, a speaker, actor, writer, entrepreneur. I'm still working all that out but at Mentality we help men take control of their mindset by teaching them to find purpose, resilience and what I believe is the new success, inner peace. That sounds good. If you are that guy who is waking up to the fact that they need to do something different in life and the same old habits aren't working for you, it might be time to step up. If you want to start your journey with us, you can go to mentality.co.uk forward slash coaching to join the best team you have ever seen. Christine, thank you for coming on the Mentality Podcast. Thank you for being here and spending some time. I know you're in California. I'm in Mexico, Monterey. But this conversation, I am very much looking forward to getting into it, to chat to you about the benefits of scuba diving, something that I have a personal connection to, not just because I tried it for the first time a few months ago now, in a beautiful place in Costa Rica, a place called Playa Portero, with Connect Ocean, was the, was the guys that I went down and, and a fellow called Ernst who took us through the uh, the paddy certificate, but also because my granddad was an avid scuba diver. I used to think my granddad was cool, not just because he rode motorbikes, <laughs> but because he went off on these mad scuba diving trips everywhere across the world when I was younger. And I always used to be a little bit jealous. I had the first time or first taste of, of doing it and I actually managed to pass and gain my paddy certificate which opens up the world for me from this point so I'm, I'm so excited about that but just before we, we started recording I mentioned how cool your job seems and how cool it, it must be so let's let's start there let's tell us how cool your job is and and, um, and what you what you do for a living. <laughs> Oh, perfect. Well, first off, thank you for having me and, and just allowing me to have this conversation with you. It's so, so fun to talk to people about scuba diving. And I do have to say I've got the best job in the world because I've worked for this fantastic organization for the last 27 years of my life. And it's allowed me to, to really help people discover, I think you just said, uh, a whole new part of the world. And it literally is that, right? It's just, it's a transformative experience. And it allows you just to discover a whole new world that uh, a lot of people don't know is down there. And uh, I know I had that experience when I first learned to dive uh, when I was a teenager uh, with my sister. And the, the moment I put that mask on and did my first dive in the ocean, I knew I was hooked. It was just going to be a forever thing for me. It's cool to be here 27 years later and really still getting to, to talk to folks like you and, and to just tell people about the magic of the underwater world. 
So what, what does your journey look like then from that first dive? You know, what, what was the progression from there for you? Yeah. So, you know, I, I just knew, like I said, I, I was hooked from just a, an enthusiast and activity point of view. I think I probably went into it just like most people do, wanting to, you know, throw another activity on their bucket list, if you will. And at the time in my life, I was doing skydiving and bungee jumping. And I thought, well, why not scuba diving as well? But what's different about this than any of those other activities is, making a life out of it, making it a, an obsession, really, not only on in my own life personally with my family, but also in my profession. So my journey as I was continuing to scuba dive, I just continued to learn more and get my advanced open water certification and, and just continued through the, the PADI continuing education progression and realized quickly that I wanted to become an instructor because I wanted to share that gift and that at that moment of awe with other people and introduce my friends, my family and others uh, to the underwater world in the same way and in that same opportunity that I was given. So ultimately, that's what led me to Patty. That's what led me to my work here, both as an instructor, but also uh, as a career professional as well. Yeah, and, and so you take that enthusiasm literally into your job now and bring people into that world that we're talking about. And is it just for you now you're looking at different ways to connect people to scuba diving and to making it a lifestyle choice for those? Yeah, that's right. I mean, so I, I have the wonderful position here at Patty being the chief brand and membership officer. So what that means is I get to develop brand initiatives that push towards our mission of seeking adventure and saving the ocean and really developing a deeper connection, not just teaching people to dive, but teaching people to care about the balance between humanity and ocean and, and finding a better balance. So again, of course, we all want to seek adventure and, and all of the wonderful parts that diving offers. But to actually give purpose to it and get divers uh, and any water enthusiasts really who care about the ocean and want it to be a better place, giving them the options to do that. And, you know, Patty has dedicated its mission to doing just that. And, and I get to be part of, of leading that. That's amazing. That's so amazing. <laughs> We're talking about coming into a a new lifestyle and um, introduction to, to a new sort of lifestyle choice. The first dive, I just want to let you know, the first dive that I had in Costa Rica, after descending 12 meters, the first introduction to this under sea world I had was a huge eagle ray, I think you'd call them, massive stingray. Wow. This is like the first thing. And then we'd notice just be behind it, a white tip barrier reef shark lurking, <laughs> lurking behind it. And, nice. Um, you, talk, you know, you talk about like introductions and, and my uh, my old physio used to say to me that I never did things by halves with how I used to play the game. But I just thought, wow, what an introduction. And, you know, not really expecting that to happen, not really expecting this sort of introduction to it. It was just incredible. It was just incredible. Yeah. And, it, and it went on from there, that, that experience. What for you, what, what like moments have you had before this turns into an absolute geeking out in terms of scuba diving? What <laughs> moments have you had the favorite moments under the water? Oh my gosh. So many, but let me start by saying my first dive was actually maybe the opposite of yours. My sister and I were keen on doing it. So you know, we went through all the pool training and all of those things. And our first ocean dive, the visibility was, I don't know, maybe two to three feet or so. And we were uh, challenged a little bit with just some of those diving conditions. And I tell you, when we came back up on the, on the beach, our instructor started to apologize to us and said, girls, I'm sorry, the conditions weren't great today. And both my sister and I were so excited that we just breathed air underwater for the first time in our lives. And it just didn't even matter that the conditions weren't spectacular we just thought we had accomplished something. So that sense of accomplishment, I think, is what got me hooked. And then, of course, the next day, our diving conditions were absolutely spectacular, completely different dive site, completely different day. And that's really what was, I think, the game changer for me. But in terms of some of my favorites, I mean, oh, my goodness, the list is probably so long that we don't even have time for it. But I'll, I'll pick a couple. Last year, I was able to actually teach my daughter to scuba dive. She was 13 years old, came of age, and decided she wanted to learn to dive. And as I was teaching she and, and her best friend, we were doing the tour portion of their very first dive. And as we were navigating through this kelp forest out at Catalina Island, offshore California, 
we came across this like six to seven foot or two meter long giant sea bass. And boy, it was absolutely spectacular. And the kids were, they were screaming with excitement through their regulators. They were high-fiving each other, doing these awesome sort of dances underwater. And when we finally came to the surface, they just like thought that was the coolest thing of their whole lives. And it gave me that opportunity to really rediscover it all through their eyes. And that was, that was pretty spectacular. So uh, maybe just a, a typical, you know, everyday dive off California, but it was turned magical by the fact that it was my daughter and her best friend that were discovering it for the first time. I love that. I love that. And it's something that, that as I've been traveling and, and moving around, I think scuba diving links with this in, in particular. But I think when you sort of, putting yourself out there and, and you really don't have any expectations of what's going to happen and you just sort of doing everything you need to do, you know, doing the stuff which keeps you safe or doing the stuff which which puts you out of, of your comfort zone. I think real sort of happiness, I think real sort of magic, if you like, is when you don't put expectations on something and that sort of, as you said, you said it was a familiar dive, but opening yourself up to to introducing your daughter and her friend to that experience. Yeah, I can imagine that wasn't something that you were counting on and expecting. And, and one thing that, that I want to ask you about in particular is why would someone scuba dive and, and why would someone scuba dive in terms of improving the mental well-being? You know, one thing that I found, I, I found myself having flashbacks to when I was a 10-year-old on a rugby pitch, actually, and standing around in a huddle and learning a new skill and trying it out with your friends and your teammates and just being in that beginner mindset for me it was just beautiful it was just beautiful and i had no idea what i was doing i had no idea what the kit was called i'm so oblivious with putting the kit together and, and taking it apart and, and all this sort of stuff but i just felt like for a moment in my life it's, it's something that i needed I felt so like renewed, I guess. And that, that's what we talk about when you come into another lifestyle. And I felt the possibility again. I felt the the ability to open up another perspective in life and, and to be able to learn something new. And something new, which does develop into being able to travel deeper, being able to explore communities more, being able to see sharks when it's your first ever dive as well. So it were, it were quite, it were quite incredible. And, and, I just throw that, that that to you, Kristen. If, if if you could, if you have any examples or you have any sort of feelings for why diving can be beneficial for your mental well being. Yeah, well, everything you just described right there, Stevie, is, is is exactly spot on. I think everyone goes through that somewhat transformative experience in at their own time, in their own way. I know I sure did in, in my own way, but I think what's been really interesting is to see how it really affects everybody so individually and uniquely. And there's no doubt that scuba diving itself as an activity really promotes health and wellness generally, right? You're, if you think about so many aspects of it, there's kind of the relaxation aspect of it, right? Almost a Zen-like experience because you're so mindful of things like your breathing and going through your, your air tank and it presents almost a meditative quality that can just be so healthy for you. While at the same time, it can be exhilarating and you really get your, your serotonin and your dopamine going in your brain because you're reacting to what you're seeing, right? Like what you just described on that first dive where you see this spotted eagle ray and a white tip reef shark and things like that, or what my daughter and her friends saw with that giant sea bass, they get just so excited. And of course it gets all of those kind of happy hormones, if you will, just really juiced up, which is pretty cool. Just a quick one, guys. We have had two new counselors join the team here at Mentality. If you are at a stage in life where you are struggling to manage your mind and it keeps affecting your happiness, it is time to do something about it. You can finally allow yourself the time to sit down with one of our mentality counsellors who will understand what you are going through. They'll help you understand why you are struggling and they'll give you the tools to get back to being happy and the best that you can be. A lot of the time, we just need to clear up any unwanted thoughts and emotions so that we can show up in life the way that we want to. 
Mentality counselling is available in Yorkshire, Lancashire and the South East, including London. Sessions can be in person, face-to-face -face therapy or walking therapy. Alternatively, all counsellors can deliver sessions via Zoom. Go to mentality.co.uk forward slash counselling to start your journey. So Christian, for you, in your experience, how does scuba diving help your mental well-being? Yeah, thanks, Stevie. Great question. And I, I think it's it's clear that scuba diving as an activity has, you know, clear positive, both physical and, and psychological benefits to immersion, right? And if you think about all of the qualities of it for yourself and for anyone, there's so many aspects of diving that really aids in that. And it's everything from just little things like you're outdoors, you have exposure to sunlight, you know, and the vitamin D and the outdoor nature of your activities. But also if you think about like the breathing elements of it, scuba diving can become this sort of Zen-like experience, almost meditative because you're really thinking about your inhales and your exhales because we know in scuba diving you don't ever hold your breath so yeah and you want to have good air consumption and things like that so you really start to get into this almost meditative quality at times but then depending on what you're seeing like you were just telling me on your first dive you saw a spotted eagle ray and a white tip reef shark and in times like that you you really kind of get all those happy hormones going too like your dopamine and your serotonin and it just it stimulates your brain in a very healthy way just like when i was teaching my daughter and and her friend when they came up they were just all laughter giggles and 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 it wasn't even just the diving experience that entire weekend became all about that moment and the many times that they relived it and retold those stories you could tell it was just good for their soul yeah. so and then of course there's just the exercise aspect of it that just makes you feel good both mind body and soul you're doing something good for the planet you're learning to appreciate nature in a different way and really help to conserve the ocean and its inhabitants. All of these things really contribute both for me personally and as an instructor, when I watch these elements come out in other people and just mm -hmm. how they take in scuba diving and that immersive quality where the water just, it's so sensory, it wraps around you, you feel it and you can't help but come out with a smile on your face and just in a better mind state. Yeah, there's so much there. There's so much there in what you're saying. There's something about actually relaying the stories and further imprinting that moment into your brain. And it's like, yeah, I think as humans, we, we love to store that there. And it's not just the moment. It's not just 10 minutes after it's happened. But I guess it's like being able to relive that moment with those people for the rest of your life. And I mean, that, that moment where I descended 12 meters down and was just really not knowing what to expect. And I saw the, the big eagle, I saw the um, shark. I think I was, it was it's so surreal because you can, when you're underwater and like you say, you concentrate on your breath and concentrate on, on being safe and, and this new experience, you can't quite say anything you just you're trying to express how surprised you are and how good something is but you, you can't really do it straight away in the moment you've got to save it till you get up <laughs> thinking right i cannot wait to talk about that with a bit of watermelon on the boat and a bit of rubious tea and they build they build out you know those moments and those sort of chats that you have after and as i've been sort of digesting my experience and passing my paddy and sort of thinking about in terms of well-being there's, there's sort of like one i'd love to chat to you more about this actually but there's one sort of idea that's come to me after looking at how scuba diving helps veterans how it helps the people that have disabilities and i found it quite mind-blowing to be honest but i feel like rugby players people who've retired from rugby if you could pick up a cohort of these guys that retire every year and put them through the scuba diving the paddy it just carries so much over, you know, that social sort of idea of it. All the annoying and loud ones, they can't annoy you underwater. You know, there's there's that side of it as well. And and it's it's accomplishment and it's achievement and it's something that glues together that social 
setting that you need, the team that that, that you're so used to. And that's something that, that I've been thinking about quite a bit and something that I'm going to write an article on to, to talk about as well for mentality. So, yeah, I just I just find that that's so powerful. The And with the, the veterans, is there any sort of knowledge and, and experience that you've had with those initiatives that bring these guys into scuba diving? Yeah, it, it, it's such a great perspective. I love just the way you described that as, as you're talking about the, the rugby players, could be a big burly rugby player, a, a veteran, and it could be anybody in the world. And it's just such a leveler, isn't it? You know, yeah. I mean, my 13 year old daughter diving with one of your rugby mates mm-hmm. and they, it, it's just an equalizer. And um, I think maybe just starting off with some of those aspects that you picked up on in a way it, it can turn maybe elements of, of fear or apprehension into courage once you break through some maybe even personal elements that you're working through. Because let's face it, we're not meant to breathe underwater, right? So when you first have a regulator in your mouth and you descend, whether it's 12 meters or however deep you're going, you're, you're in a completely different environment that you're not necessarily meant to be in, but you're enabled to be in there because you've got this fantastic scuba equipment on and some good training and you're experiencing something. So a lot of times that brings about a little bit of fear or apprehension, and then you watch it. You just watch this transformation into courage or maybe the perceived barriers of, gosh, I can't do this because, you know, and that because dot, dot, dot could be anything. Maybe it's a double amputee and they have said, nope, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to scuba dive. And then they realize actually they can, and we can figure out how to adapt certain techniques to enable that. So you have these perceived barriers that just get torn down and uh, maybe it's frustration or you're not getting a skill right. You can't achieve your buoyancy. And when you see that give way to accomplishment, it's just this, uh, it's something to behold. It's, it it really is quite beautiful. And, and then you get to, you know, some of the specifics you were talking about there with veterans, folks who have experienced maybe a, a life altering injury, my husband is a great example of that. In 2013, he jumped out of an airplane, uh, landed poorly, and basically lost his right arm in his accident, in a skydiving accident. And we've worked through a lot of different adaptive techniques, changing some equipment on configurations and things like that so that he can now more easily and capably adapt his techniques to be a very highly functioning scuba diver. And he's already at the master scuba diver level now. So it just... It, it has this unique way of breaking down those barriers, giving people in a sense of accomplishment and that the physical benefits, plus, of course, the mental benefits to that and psychological benefits are amazing. I can go deeper into the post-traumatic stress disorder and the TDIs and you know stuff like that, that we've actually seen some solid studies that have backed up that it's a he- there is a healing quality there. So... Yeah, and I mean, I would love to hear more, like whether whether it's your your husband's journey or the the, the journey of someone with PTSD. Like, how how do you see that forming? Like, like, what's the journey of that from feeling devastation, I guess, to, yeah. to being able to get under the water? There's no single answer for that that's ever going to be the same, right? Because mm. everybody's journey is so specific to them. What, what's interesting is anyone who has experienced a lot of trauma, their brain is just constantly in a state of like hyper vigilant. And we've worked with universities, John Hopkins, Texas State University, you know, others who have really dived deeper into this to really understand when somebody goes underwater on scuba diving, what does that do? It, 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 there's some, some obvious things like it calms them because it requires them to focus on something that is productive. Underwater, it demands you to monitor your equipment, to communicate with your dive buddies, to exercise. All these things keep your brain engaged in a very constructive way. And by enhancing your coping skills and the peer support and just that deeper connection to oneself and the natural world is, is just creates a very positive experience. Um, but like I said, it, it's different for everyone. You know, I think what, what's clear is if they take the time and, and sometimes it does take time depending on maybe what their physical challenges could be or what they at least perceive them to be. And when you overcome those 
And you really get to experience and kind of pull it all together underwater. And and you see that focus. It it gets back to what we were just saying is they come up from these dives. My husband comes up from a dive after his experience, or I've dove with many wounded veterans or individuals who've just had life-altering injuries and coming up after a scuba diving experience with them and just listening to them and, and all those after stories and all of that, it's just so meaningful. You know, I mean, we've worked with folks who are in wheelchairs and diving is the only place in the world where they can feel a sense of freedom out of their chair in the water immersed. We even worked with a John Hopkins university on a double blinded study where it actually starts to show the, the reality that there's healing qualities when you're at depth Uh, individuals started to feel tingling in areas that they've not felt any sensation in before. It's it's just amazing. It's kind of mind blowing that way. And it's one of the gifts I think that we, we see with scuba diving. Yeah. I mean, just as you were talking then just feeling the the first moment getting into the water and especially when you're doing your, your your open water certificate, you're entering the water and you're sort of entering the unknown as well for what it's even going to look like, what it's going to be like. Yes. And just you just made me remember how together you had to be with everyone there. It was with my partner, Natalie, and, and there was a, another lady who was doing it. And there was Ernst, who was our, our leader. And you have to be constantly communicating and you have to be constantly aware of what's going on. You can't switch off. Everything's solution focused. And um, you do feel a sense of calm when you're on the water. And yes. the, the reason why I was so keen to do it was because obviously I've, I've had a brain injury for two years, two and a half years nearly. And I've not been able to exercise. I've not been able to, to do anything that I used to do. I saw this opportunity to to do my potty up, open water is something which I might it might possibly might be able to be my thing you know I might be able to do it and one thing that did cause stress was the boat and how rocky that was and, and with my issue with the vestibular it wasn't very nice but as soon as I got in the water it was like oh it was so calming and it was so like just grounding I know it's yeah. weird to say grounding in, in the water but yeah, it just it just felt like you'd, you'd entered into a, a sort of a, a feeling of calmness, and that's 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 how I felt. I know that a lot of people have different experiences, and as you say, like it's a lot of fear. It's a lot of fear, and everyone takes that fear on very differently. But that togetherness and the constant okay signs, the constant understanding of where you're at, where, how deep you are, how how much you're breathing and and definitely do not hold your breath so you're always you're always on you're always switched on for it i did feel like yeah just a sense of of camaraderie as well and that's one of those reasons it it pushes me to to sort of try and get rugby players to to do this on their own backs or to do it with with other people too It, it certainly it certainly was a moment where i felt i could just sit into it and feel into it and like, how do you feel, Christian, about the future? Like, for, for initiatives for you, how do you want to connect people to this experience? How do you feel like it's the, the way forward for for Paddy and with the challenges that are going on in the world environmentally, but also the the constant uh, journey that we're on with mentality to try and get people to live a more authentic and more proactively well life? You know, what way do you see it moving forward? Oh gosh. First off, that was so beautiful just listening to how you just described that there of, of the mindset that you get into when you're underwater. And I love hearing that and just listening to you, especially as, as a reasonably new diver, just describe it like that is, yeah. is really wonderful because it is. It's it's one of the only places on the planet where you're just away from it all, aren't you? You talk about being in the moment, right? I, I think so, so many times we, we try to encourage ourselves just as to be better humans, to be in the moment, like live in the moment and, and not to be distracted by our phones or whatever it might be, right? I mean, we're here, I'm in California right now, you're in Mexico, and here we are using technology to even have yeah. this conversation, which is cool. 
But at the same time, there's times where you just want to put all of that away, kind of goodbye, cruel world. And let me just do something that is just so positive for myself. And diving offers that. And, and you're forced to be in the moment and only thinking about those types of things that are in that moment, very important to you. So to shift and answer into your question is how do we how do we get more people to experience that? And I'm extremely optimistic that we can and that people are starting to really discover that experiences are more important than things and focusing on self-help and self-love and finding ways to just do things that are not only good for self, but good for humanity is exactly what diving offers and exactly what people are starting to pursue more and more. There's so many things going on in the world right now. And I think every time I turn on the news, you know, there's just a lot of negativity reinforced and, and diving doesn't care about any of that. You go underwater with a whale shark, with a stingray, with a school of barracuda or bumphead wrasse, and diving doesn't know there's a pandemic happening right now. Diving doesn't know about wars or inequalities or anything like that. It doesn't care. Diving is there for you at any time when you're able to make time for it. And, and I think the more we can connect individuals with things that are just bigger than ourselves, then that's success. And, and so for Patty in its 50th year, one thing that we did is we recrafted our mission. And our mission really is, is to create torchbearers that actually not just explore the ocean, but protect the ocean. And that's what we're on about and connecting people to ocean conservation and just the people and humanity aspect that diving offers and the fact you can be on a dive boat in the Philippines with probably people from all different cultures. You all speak different languages and underwater, we all do one of these and that means okay, or we're all signaling to each other or tapping our air gauges and we all know what we're saying. If there's a shark, you put your hand up on your forehead and you get to see a shark, you know, and if yeah. there's a turtle, you get to do this fun little thing and there's a turtle and, and we all understand it. It's so beautiful. And there's not many things in the world that offer that, but uh, diving sure does. So I'm optimistic about the future and the fact that we can get more people involved not only in exploring it, but really being part of a bigger purpose, which is really to save the ocean. Yeah, I love that. Uh, I really love that. And, and that's something that I got from sitting down with Connect Ocean and Ernst. Uh, that was one of the big introductions, really, that, that he was talking about. And mentioning that he was taking people out there so that they got the understanding, they got the experience of being in that world so that they had a personal sort of regard for it, you know, and it's not just this this thing that's out there that we never see, so we don't care about it, but th th he was getting people and, and that's part of his mission. And I guess it aligned with Paddy as well to, to get people into this world and to experience it and to care about it as well. And honestly, the feeling that, that I, that I got down there was being away from the chaos. It was being away from the world. I felt so humbled as well. You're seeing a shark that does not care whatsoever about you. And um, you, you, you live in this world where you're always striving some some direction, always trying to to complete something or to achieve something. And, and for me, that the, the connection with, with mindfulness and the connection with just being aware and, and away from what you're doing every day and humbled in a massive fashion. It was quite beautiful. It was, it was quite an experience and it's something that maybe I'll go for the shore dives next and not spend too much time on the boat. Maybe that's the one that I've got to do next. But I'd, I'd, I'd love to hear more a little bit about yourself, Christian, as well. And how, how do you manage your life? You know, at Mantali, obviously we, we, we're sort of like really keen to getting into the conversation and, and understanding people, understanding what their experiences are. But, you know, there's so many different ways that we're hearing and, and listening for, for people and to, to explain what their life is and why they live their life their way. We, we've not got a huge amount of time and it probably for another podcast another time, but you know, how alongside diving, what, what's important to you and, and, you know, why, why do you wake up every morning? You know, why do you wake up every morning to get out there and to go do it? You know, what, what's, what's your mission if you like? Yeah. Wow. That's a, like you said, that could almost be a whole nother, that's a big question with a, almost a whole nother podcast. But I will say that, you know, when I think about 
work-life balance. I don't think about it like that because I just find that you actually have to find balance in your work and you know, just do something that you absolutely are obsessed about and really care about. And then it doesn't become a trade-off, right? Because we have so many trade-offs in life. And if we can actually just find the balance within all of that and good energy everywhere. So when I wake up in the morning and I think about going to work, I don't think, well, I've got to work eight hours today so then I can go play. I actually think about it the opposite. How can I come to work every day with the right mindset that I'm going to have fun, I'm going to inspire people, I'm going to do something that has purpose because what I do for a living has a greater purpose that uh, not only serves people and humanity, but it actually serves the ocean and the environment. And those are the things that get me up in the morning and drive me. And there's, of course, a lot of probably deeper personal things that tie into more my family structure and my faith and you know things like that. But I will say more specific to just my job and what I do and, and the, how I think about it is, is just one of service. And how can I do something that services other people and the planet? And I'm fortunate enough, we started this conversation. I think I told you I had the best job in the world uh, because I think that I, I get to accomplish that. And I work in the service of my people and my planet. And when you get to do that, and when you get to share what you do for a living, and I work hard, don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I will put in the long hours, but I do so willingly and in that spirit of service to people and planet because at the end of the day, it, it's going to make a difference. And you want to just carry that torch forward. I know we use the word torchbearer sometimes, with it, which is kind of an obscure word, but it's actually the, the humanoid, if you will, in that patty logo that's carrying a torch, physical torch, and kind of illuminating. In those days, it was illuminating the underwater world, you know, back in the kind of Jacques Cousteau silent world days where they actually carried torches underwater. And now we have these lights by all these wonderful companies. But how I think about it personally is I connect with that as like, I'm carrying a torch for a certain period of time. I don't know how many breaths I have in this world, but I'm gonna spend every one of them carrying a torch for the purposes that I believe in. And then I'm gonna pass that torch to other folks. And the more I can pass that torch and talk to people like you, Stevie, and, and, and your listeners, and hope that they grab it and that they want to do the same thing and serve their people and their planet and make the underwater world a better place for our generations to come, then that that gives fulfillment. And then I don't have to think about work-life balance as a trade-off. I get to think about it as an integrative approach. Yeah, as a full approach to life. And I guess that, that sort of connects with what we're talking about. Literally, if you step out of your comfort zone and step into the water and sort of plumb yourself a little bit deeper, it does open up another option, another option to take your life a different place. And um, yeah. thank you. Kristen for spending this time with me to talk about it and to show the fact about Paddy I think it's incredible it's an incredible experience and it's something that gave me a lot of life and a lot of purpose or a lot of light if you say yeah. in, in my life at a, a tricky and, and complicated time with, with my health and I hope that this podcast can go out there and inspire people to take it upon themselves to, to enter that arena as well I do too. And it, it's been lovely talking to you and hearing your own personal experience. And I wish you the very best, not only in life, but in, in your, your service to your people and planet as well. I can tell you have it in your heart. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. Legend. <laughs>